Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So it's about time now that we got into the details of uh, dislocations and we shall start as I told with two extremes, the edge dislocation and the screw dislocation. Now uh, it, uh, if I look at a sample of aluminum under a TEM, we had pointed out that typically one finds a curved dislocation line. That means there will all be a lot of dislocations typically, uh, a simple sample of aluminum even if it is a well annealed sample, you will find a lot of dislocations uh, in a transmission electron microscope and when you, if you take a deformed specimen like a deformed specimen of aluminum which has been maybe uh, deformed in any way, then you will find that there are a lot more dislocations in the material. In fact, there is a structure of all these dislocation, there could be dislocation cells which form, there could be regions of high dislocation density and regions of low dislocation density as well. Uh, but essentially all these dislocations typically will be having a curved line, they will not be straight dislocations. In other words, as we shall see that these dislocations have a mixed character they do not uh, have a pure edge or a pure screw kind of a character, but they actually have a mixed character. And in fact, if you notice that the percentage of screw and percentage of edge character and what we mean by these terms we will understand very soon by actually taking a curved dislocation change from position to position along the dislocation line. That means, if I take a point on a dislocation line which I observe under a transmission electron microscope, it will have a certain character edge character and a certain screw character and the dislocation itself which is a mixed dislocation can be thought of decomposed into these two parts which are the edge and the screw extremes. If I take another point along the same dislocation line, this percentages would change and therefore, the edge and screw character change along the dislocation line. However, we will see that there are very special circumstances where pure edge, pure screw or a mixed dislocation of a very fixed percentage can be formed. And uh, a nice example of this would be the case of an epitaxial film of germanium silicon on which is germanium silicon solid solution on a silicon substrate and in this case you find 60 degree misfit dislocations form and these are straight dislocations and they are have a fixed character of 60 degree uh, misfit and what I mean by the 60 degree also will become clear when I take up the uh, edge and screw components of curved dislocation. And in this case of course, the angle between B and T is 60 degrees. Uh, the edge dislocation is far easier to visualize, far easier to understand and it is also uh, it is because that what we might call something it is associated with a half miss uh, extra half plane or a missing half plane and we will use the edge dislocation to understand many of the concepts regarding dislocations. Of course, we will also take up the screw dislocation uh, to understand many more concepts regarding dislocations. So, um, we said that dislocations play a very important role in plastic deformation, they actually weaken the crystal and dislocation can be actually visualized as a boundary between a slipped and unslipped part of a crystal lying over a slip plane. Now to show this, so I have a some sort of a model here and you can see that uh, if I take a perfect crystal and then push in this part of the crystal, that means I am pushing it, uh, making an operation where I am pushing in this part of the crystal and when I do this pushing in here. I will notice that there is an extra plane which was sitting outside here originally, the original crystal extended till here and this is now one this extra plane has gone into the crystal and in this case the extra plane has travelled to this distance from here to here and it is now sits in this place. Now this extra half plane is a characteristic of a pure edge dislocation and now the crystal can, this dislocation can be thought of as the boundary between a slip part of the crystal and the unslip part of the crystal. So, this is a way of visualizing a dislocation and often uh, this uh, kind of a visualization may not be possible and all we have to uh, uh, visualize is an edge dislocation by its mere character that means the extra half plane for an edge dislocation. So, 
when I push in a crystal, I can push in the extra half plane, the extra half plane can travel of course, and even come out from the other side of the crystal, creating a step on the other side, and we will actually see these kind of steps as they uh, form using some other graphics. But now, I can visualize this region, which is now the slipped region. So, this is my slip plane, the whole plane, and so this is now part of my slip plane, which is extending outside the crystal, and so this slip plane which extends till here. So, this region of the slip plane is the part which has been slipped and the dislocation has uh, glided till here and this part of the slip plane is where the it is not glided that means, there is no slip in that part. So, a dislocation can be visualized as the boundary between the slipped and the unslipped part of a crystal. Okay. So, this is a way of visualizing an uh, dislocation and in this case it has been illustrated using the edge dislocation. When we talk about dislocations, uh, it has with it associated two important vectors. The two important vectors are the line vector t and the Burgers vector b. The Burgers vector perhaps is um, as cardinal to a dislocation as you can think of. Um, a dislocation is born with a Burgers vector and expresses it even in its death. So, it the entire life of a dislocation uh, even starting before its birth to its death. Uh, has this Burgers vector embedded or the signature embedded in a dislocation. The t vector is a unit tangent vector along a dislocation line and if you have a straight dislocation line the t vector is a constant okay. and you can obviously consider unit t vector also that means, which is a uh, uh, fundamental la uh, lattice translation vector kind of thing which is a unit vector, but also you can other consider other kinds of t vectors, but essentially it is a tangent vector to the dislocation line and for a curved dislocation from point to point the t vector will change, but the b vector is absolutely a crystallographic constant it will not change e either with the screw nature of the dislocation or the edge nature or the mixed percentage of the dislocation it remains a constant and it is determined crystallographically. And as we shall see it is the it is the fundamental lattice translation vector for a full dislocation. So, let us start with uh, the Burgers vector of an edge dislocation and if you already have a dislocation then we can determine the Burgers vector using what is known as the uh, Burgers circuit and the Burgers circuit associated with the convention like, like the right hand finish to start rule which is written in shorthand as RHFS can give us the Burgers vector. So, what we are dealing with here is an edge dislocation and we are trying to make a circuit known as the Burgers circuit to determine the Burgers vector, but please remember even if I did not have a dislocation, it were a perfect crystal, crystallographically I can tell what is the Burgers vector, but if I already have a dislocation, then I can use the Burgers circuit to determine the Burgers vector. So, how do I uh, do this Burgers circuit along and typically I need a convention to define this and the convention has to be constant across uh, the various considerations in the problem and in this case we are using the right hand finish to start rule and I will explain what does this rule mean. So, what I do first I take a perfect crystal which is the crystal on the left you can see the crystal on the left which is a perfect crystal and I make a circuit that means I start from a point which is marked here start and I take 8 atomic steps to the right. So, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 atomic steps to the right this is an arbitrary number I can choose any number of steps uh, it could be 8, it could be 10, it could be 40, but I just choose some number of steps to the right then I go down 7 steps and this again is an arbitrary number. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 steps downwards, then I take 8 steps to the left again and take 7 steps up. So, un not unexpectedly very obviously we land up exactly where we started off with. So, I land up where I started off with. In other words a circuit like this closes on itself in a perfect crystal as expected. Now, of course, I could have taken a more uh, what you might call a more arbitrary kind of path instead of taking a square path for instance I could have started here and I could have gone down instead of going up here I could have gone down like this gone like this gone like this gone like this maybe even gone up and so forth, but it is always simpler to take a nice uh, rectangular path the way it has been shown here in the figure. Now, what I do I do the same circuit in the crystal with an edge dislocation. Now, you can see that you got an edge dislocation here and as I pointed out the edge dislocation is associated with a half plane. So, this is my edge dislocation it is a dislocated crystal on the right hand side. Now, few important points about the edge dislocation which of course, I will also explain during the using the model 
that the edge dislocation is not the extra half plane of atoms, it is not a two dimensional defect, it is not the missing half plane of atoms. So, you can see that you can even consider this as the missing half plane of atoms, it is not the missing half plane of atoms, it is in fact exactly between the two. So, you have the edge dislocation sitting right here going inward in the paper. So, this is a two dimensional section of a three dimensional crystal which goes into the plane of the slide. So, we will have a little more to say about the um, uh, edge dislocation with the model in hand, but now let us do the Burger circuit. So, when I, st I start as usual from a certain particular atom around the dislocation and I stay far away from the dislocation line which is here. So, this is my dislocation line, I stay a little far away from the dislocation line and now I construct 7, 8 steps to the right, 7 steps downward. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 then down 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I go 8 left and come back and not uh, as obvious you will not land up exactly where you started with and that is because now you have an extra half plane of atoms and that extra half plane has accounted for this mismatch. So, I have constructed what you might call a right handed circuit, I could have equally well construct a left handed circuit, but I am sticking now to the right hand finish to start rule. So, I construct a right handed circuit and at the end of the circuit I find that my finish point and the start point do not coincide with each other. And now I use a rule which is the finish to start rule that means I draw a vector connecting the finish point to the start point and that vector is the Burgers vector. Now, uh, this Burgers vector now which is typically written in symbol as a B with a ve vector cap on top or a bold B. So, is the Burgers vector and the modulus of the Burgers vector gives the value of the this vector. Now, um, it is clear that this is a lattice translation vector, it connects one point in the lattice to another point in the lattice and therefore, this is an important vector which is associated with the dislocation. Now, let me summarize this slide before we take up the model and try to understand the edge dislocation. So, first I, I take a perfect crystal, I make a circuit the circuit could be very arbitrary, but typically I choose a rectangular circuit and I make the circuit in a right handed fashion that means I go clockwise in this case. Then I take the same circuit and put it in a perfect crystal making sure that the uh, defected region that is my dislocation is included within the circuit and I stay my circuit is far away from the core of the dislocation and this being the region of the dislocation very I do not stay very close to it. Then I find that this right handed circuit leaves a small gap. I draw a vector connecting the finish point to the start point and this is what is my Burgers vector. Now, let us me try to understand this edge dislocation a little more. Uh, so, as I pointed out the edge dislocation is not the extra half plane. So, this extra half plane is not the edge dislocation, neither is it the missing half plane. It is in fact, the region the line exactly between the missing and the extra half planes which is what has been marked here. Okay. Now, important point to note if I go far away from the dislocation line the regions of the crystal suppose I have here in this case of course, I have not gone really far away, but if I really could go really far away the regions of the crystal far away from the dislocation line either on the upper side or on the lower side are perfect. So, this is a perfect region of a crystal. So, you can see you can measure the lattice parameters they will be as close to the farther you go the more perfect the crystal would get and, and similarly the regions far away at the bottom side of the uh, slip plane as we call them the plane of the where I my dislocation lies is also perfect. Now, a few uh, few points to be noted even here is the fact that if I have an edge dislocation sitting here we will see that the displacement fields and stress fields to which we will of course, come later are long range fields in other words even if I go uh, little far away there will be small disturbances to the crystal, but as long as these disturbances are small compared with the Burgers vector I treat them as 0 and therefore, I can treat that region of the crystal as a perfect crystal. So, what I will do now I will take up the model and explain you some of these things. So, I have here a model now which is made of straws and you can see that in this model there is now an extra half plane of atoms which has been introduced. So, this is my plane of atoms. So, let me take up. So, this is my extra half plane which has been introduced. If you look at the crystal below you can think of this region as an missing half plane as well 
and this region of the dislocation which has been marked in blue you can see here blue is the region which is highly distorted that means, the bonds in this region are highly distorted and the crystal is highly distorted this is the region wherein the stress fields and strain fields are very large. Now, another thing which you would notice is that the region here is also a region where there is some extra free volume. In other words, as compared to a normal lattice crystal which is far away which is now a perfect unit cell somewhere far away here. In this perfect unit cell you know the kind of voids which are present and you know the fraction of those voids like for instance if you take an FCC crystal you could have a uh, octahedral and tetrahedral void. So, we know all about them, but now if you look at this region there is an extra free volume associated with this dislocation and this is a very important thing and we will come back to this what is the effect of this extra free volume. Okay. Now, we can actually draw even a for instance a vector like this which we can call the Burgess vector, but typically this has to be drawn far away from the dislocation line. Uh, now, the dislocation line itself is the line which is here which is bet between the missing and the extra half plane of atoms. Now, what happens if I look at this crystal from sideways? Okay. Sideways we notice that the crystal nearly looks perfect. So, looking from this direction I cannot see the dislocation. So, the dislocation is best viewed from this direction and in this case the dislocation line is starting from the front face of the crystal and of course, you have only taken two unit cells here typically it would run a straight dislocation line would run and then the back side of the dislocation. So, it would the terminal first one terminal point of the dislocation on the free surface would be the front free surface the other would be the back free surface okay. and therefore, this is my dislo edge dislocation in a uh, single crystal. Now, an important thing of course, it is very easy to understand an edge dislocation because it has is associated with an extra half plane of atoms. Now, this plane on which this dislocation line lies is called a slip plane. Now, the vector t vector is nothing but a line vector which goes into the plane because now my dislocation is going inward and now my t vector is this pen as you can see which is the vector which describes the line of the dislocation because this is now a straight dislocation in this crystal my t vector is not changing from position to position, but if it were a curved dislocation line then not only the t vector would change, but also character of the dislocation also change as we shall shortly see. Now, the Burgers vector is now this vector connecting this atomic position to the next atomic position and this is my b vector. As you can see the t vector for an edge dislocation which is this vector is perpendicular to the b vector. So, my t vector is in this direction, the b vector is in this direction and the t and b vectors are perpendicular to each other. So, this is an important point to be noted and the t vector and the b vector together define my slip plane. So, the plane common to both the t vector and the b vector for an edge dislocation is my slip plane. Now, why do I call it the slip plane that takes us back to the experiment or the model in which we had pushed an atomic plane uh, pushed the side of a crystal. So, that we pushed in an atomic plane. So, that is what or an half atomic plane. So, the same thing can be visualized here suppose I push this part of the crystal and then therefore, I create a step on the surface and then this plane moves in here. So, this plane which is now the middle plane the plane residing here would be my slip plane and as we shall see by taking examples from face centered cubic crystals etcetera typically this would be a close pack plane in these kind of close pack crystals. Okay. So, so what are the things associated with the dislocation now let me revise. So, this edge dislocation is associated with an extra half plane of course, this extra half plane need not really be half it could end somewhere in the crystal only thing it should not go all the way to the crystal then it will be a make it a perfect crystal. So, it has some end somewhere within the crystal and therefore, it can be called though we use the word half we mean it does not go through all the way through. So, that is the first thing second thing it is associated with the line vector which is between the missing and the extra half planes. It is associated with the Burgers vector which is a lattice translation vector connecting two lattice points. The t vector and the b vector together define the slip plane along which this dislocation line can move. So, if I were to shear this crystal for instance I take this crystal and I apply a shear on the top like this and of course, I will pull the bottom side to apply a shear like this then what would happen to this crystal is that this dislocation would move on the slip plane. So, how in which direction would the dislocation line move? So, this is my dislocation line direction this dislocation line would move in the direction of the Burgers vector. 
So, this is important characteristic of the edge dislocation. So, the b vector the t vector defining the slip plane and the dislocation line in the presence of a shear would move along the direction of the Burgers vector. What would happen if of course, if the free surface it approaches a free surface the free th this extra half plane would come out and create a step on the free surface as we shall see with some graphic with graphics later on. The other point we noted using this model which is very clear is that this region um, which we shall use the word core and of course, technically the core is the region where the linear elasticity theory breaks down that means, the deformations are so large that you cannot use the linear elasticity theory anymore and this region is associated with some free volume is known as the core of the dislocation. And typically the core of the dislocation is a region which can be thought of as something between a uh, of about few Burgers vector in some cases it could be a Burgers vector it could be about 5 Burgers vector, but some region between uh, of the order of a few Burgers vector. And this free volume as we shall see later is very very important in certain phenomena which we shall consider. So, this is a model of an edge dislocation and as we should take up some graphic models it will become clear that how this model is useful in understanding the edge dislocation. So, going back to the uh, two dimensional graphic model. So, the two dimensional uh, section where this uh, slip plane meets the front face is shown here in the blue line. So, that is my slip plane the plane uh, the extra half plane is also here the Burgers vector has been drawn the t vector is a vector which is into the plane of the board. So, it is into this blue line here. So, it cannot be shown in this diagram. So, it is into the plane of the board and it is unchanging because this is now a straight edge dislocation. Now, this is an alternate way of visualizing the same. So, this is my extra half plane for the burger uh, edge dislocation the green plane which has been shown here this is my extra half plane this is my slip plane. Now, the t vector goes inward of course, this is not a unit t vector I could always draw a unit t vector which is now shown in the blue colored vector and the b vector again uh, this is not uh, crystallographically shown. So, therefore, you should remember this is just a schematic and this red vector is the Burgers vector and now the t vector and the b vector define the slip plane while the extra half plane contains my t vector. And now if I shear my crystal suppose I apply shearing forces on this crystal now this extra half plane would move parallel to b and at a certain time it this extra the dislocation line could land up here and finally, of course, leave the crystal. So, since this uh, edge dislocation is associated with this slip uh, extra half plane it is easy to visualize an edge dislocation and many of the characteristics of this uh, edge dislocation can be understood based on this kind of a construction. So, let us summarize some of the important things we have considered so far with regard to dislocations the edge dislocation especially. A dislocation can be thought of as the boundary between the slipped and the unslipped parts of a crystal lying over the slip plane. So, um, again as I told you this is just a way of visualizing the edge dislocation and often it may if a dislocation exists in a crystal it may not you cannot tell which is the slip part or which is the unslip part. So, there is a question from Mr. Ravi. Sir, uh, dislocation line that is mean dislocation line is an imaginary concept it is not actually physically present in the crystal somewhere. Oh, very good question. Now, um, the first question we have to ask is that why is this dislocation a line? why is it not a region. Okay. As I pointed out whenever we were discussing the di uh, classification of defects based on dimensionality that we will make some idealizations. If you look at actually the displacement field of a dislocation which we will take up soon or the stress, stress field it is a long range field the disturbance is not localized to that line it is it is felt by atoms which are even quite large quite far away quite a few um, even uh, atomic spacings far away from the line of the dislocation. But nevertheless uh, this is just a visualization that that is instead of now me understanding a dislocation as the displacement field of the entire atoms around it I localize all my visualization to a line which I call the dislocation. And uh, later on uh, perhaps we will deal a little bit about the concept of an image force there we will see that how we now not just worry about the line, but we can worry about the entire configuration of atoms around this line. So, definitely it is an hypothetical line, but since it is a line it is a clear cut line which can be imaged in a transmission electron microscope it is as real as any other line. So, the intersection of we have seen of the extra half plane of atoms the slip plane defines the dislocation line okay. 
for this is for the edge dislocation. The direction and magnitude of slip is characterized by the Burgers vector of the dislocation. So, the Burgers vector is perhaps a very important thing whenever we talk about dislocation, its energy, its stress fields, you will always find this Burgers vector appearing uh, anyth with anything associated with the dislocation and as we shall see that it will characterize the slip associated with the dislocation. So, this is something which I told um, I mentioned before that a dislocation is born or in fact even exists before its birth with a Burgers vector and expresses it even in its death. So, this point has to be noted and therefore, we cannot forget the Burgers vector when you are talking about a dislocation. The Burgers vector as we saw can be determined using the Burgers circuit and we typically use the right hand finish to start convention for determining the Burgers vector. So, this aspect we have seen already. Now, the periodic force field of a crystal requires atoms to move from one equilibrium position to the other. This implies automatically that the Burgers vector must connect one lattice position to the other. Of course, we are talking about for this for a full dislocation and later on we will be talking about something known as the partial dislocation also. And later on we will also see that since the energy of a dislocation goes as a square of the Burger, modulus of the Burgers vector the dislocations tend to have as small a Burgers vector as possible. So, this is something which obviously, there you, you have the smallest lattice translation vector, you could have larger translation lattice translation vectors, but you the dislocation will always choose the smallest lattice translation vector. And another important point which perhaps we will return to later is the fact that dislocations are non-equilibrium defects and would leave the crystal if given an opportunity. So, if you take a if you take a sample of aluminum and I cold work it then typically the dislocation density can go up to say 10 power 12 meter per meter cube. Then if I anneal this crystal, I will leave it at somewhat high temperature, so that there is sufficient thermal activation, then the dislocation density would reduce and of course, there, there could be mechanisms like risk crystallization and recovery which are operating, but at the end of it you will land up with a low dislocation density which could be of the order of 10 power 4. So, dislocation tend to leave the crystals okay, and it is of course, in this case we have seen they are leaving because of thermal activation. Now, let us next consider uh, the more complicated or, or let us say the more difficult to visualize form of a dislocation which is the screw dislocation. Now, uh, the reason these are called screw dislocations is can be seen from this figure that if I look at now, now this is my perfect crystal in which a screw dislocation has been introduced. Now, this is a that therefore, it is a crystal with a screw dislocation. If I look at now atomic planes, you can see that atomic planes of course, far away from this point are perfect, but if I go here and I start from this point and I make a loop around this, I would notice that I go inward, this is something like a screw. So, I if I keep on traversing, I will keep going around inward as I travel along these kind of paths. So, uh, again I of course, I have models to explain how a screw dislocation works, but from this figure it is clear that like before what I could do is that I could make a cut on the crystal, I take a perfect crystal make a cut. So, this is my plane which I make a cut, I do not cut the crystal fully, I cut it only to a somewhere in between to this point say P and then I take the upper part of the crystal and shear it with respect to the lower part. That means, I push one part this side and push another part and I make sure of course, that these atomic positions land up on top of the other atomic positions. Okay. Therefore, now what I have got is a screw dislocation. So, if you look at a region far away from this dislocation line, it is perfect. If you look at another region above which is perfect, but the region here has which is close to where the cut ends is the region of high disturbance. Now, again I can make a burger circuit in this structure in which case what I do I start I make a circuit in the perfect crystal and reproduce that same circuit in the defected crystal that means, in the presence of a dislocation. So, for instance in this case I have made a circuit which is the right handed circuit I start from this point here start say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 I go down then I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 then I go 6 back uh, 12 then of course, I came back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then I do the same thing to the right hand side come back and not unexpectedly I do not land up in the same place and using the finish to start rule in the 
using a right-handed circuit, this is now my Burgess vector. So, how did I, uh, so let me repeat the process, how did I make my dislocation? I took a perfect crystal, I cut along this blue kind of a plane, so the assuming that the whole plane goes inward, I cut this blue plane, then shear one part of the crystal with respect to the other and of course, join this to the next plane of atoms, originally this row of atoms here were stuck to this row of atoms here, but now I move and join them to the next parallel row of atoms and therefore, I get a uh, after joining now, I get a sheared crystal and this is now my dislocation line. So, far away from the dislocation line everything is perfect, but here there are large shear stresses core close to again what I can call the core of the dislocation. Now, uh, let me explain the same uh, using a, uh, a model, so that this, uh, these concepts become clear, but now uh, in this defected crystal I can make a Burgers circuit as before and now using the right hand finish to start. I can determine the Burgers vector. An important point to be noted straight away is that the dislocation line which is now of course, going inward into the crystal from this point onwards is now parallel to the Burgers vector. In other words, in this case the line vector which is the T vector is parallel to the Burgers vector. Okay. So, let me use a model to explain the concept of a screw dislocation. So, here I have a screw dislocation and the way of course, uh, it has been constructed is as, as I mentioned before and here the red line is the line of the screw dislocation. So, let me keep the crystal like this for you to understand this. So, this part of the crystal for instance originally this plane of atoms which is coming from here originally would have been stuck to this point. So, this point originally would have been stuck to this point, this point would have been stuck to this point, this point would have been stuck to this point. So, what I did? I took a shear here, I made a cut in this crystal here, moved this plane of atoms from here to this next and joined them. So, you can see if I look at my this region of crystal which is far away it is perfect, if I look at my this region of crystal it is perfect, unit cells are perfect, but here somewhere here is region which is highly distorted, the bonds are highly distorted. Originally this atoms would want to join for instance this atoms, this bond would have liked to join with this atom for instance it would have joined here this bond downward should have gone here, but is now joined shifted. Therefore, there is a distortion. So, there is a high distortion of bonds around this place which is costing energy to the crystal. Now, my dislocation line is this red line which I can shift a little bit and show you. So, this is my red line here which is the dislocation line and this is my Burgers vector which is B which is also here. So, this point joining this point can be thought of as the Burgers vector and therefore, this Burgers vector is parallel to this dislocation line. So, if I look at my crystal again, you can see that these planes are bent, they are sheared. So, this, this is the shearing direction of course, is this that means, I have taken this and pushed my crystal in this direction towards me, that means, my shearing operation is going like this, that is before joining, I make a cut, that is of course, this cut is of course, hypothetical, I am doing a mental construct to get this dislocation, the mental construct goes as follows, I make a cut in this crystal here, 